Hi, it's Kirby Summers. It's Friday, April 29th. It's about 3.30. And um, this is an impromptu uh, podcast just to sort of um, tell you what I think is going on. I'm only going to skim the surface today. And in the future, I will do a more in-depth podcast uh, because this is an important subject. Um, Before I begin, please like the video, subscribe, um, and uh, whatever questions you have after the show, just, you know, leave them in the comment section. So I said earlier today in a tweet that Vanity Fair was digging into the Inslaw promised Danny Casolaro case just as it has done in the Jeffrey Epstein case. This happened, Vanity Fair uh, was poking around and in fact wrote a pretty long story after Casolaro was murdered in 1991. So I believe the story may, may have even come out late 1991 because I believe Danny's murder happened on August 10th, 1991, which it coincidentally is the same date that Jeffrey Epstein was found dead in his cell from a series of mysterious uh, circumstances that if you look at them, they make completely no sense. Um, what can be said is that nothing about this case makes sense. Um, I think you're all aware that I am viciously trolled by Maria Farmer, who refers to herself as an Epstein victim. I just want to be clear. She, you know, she had whatever happened to her happened to her, but she was never raped and neither was Annie Farmer. Um, however, Maria Farmer has been working with Stanley Pottinger, which is very important because Stanley Pottinger is part of the Promise Inslaw history. Stanley Pottinger worked at the Nixon uh, White House. And a lot of this stuff for, for you guys, you're going to have to just dig in and do a little sleuthing on your own because it's very complicated. But when the MK Ultra program became uh, known uh, through Seymour Hirsch, uh, who wrote a couple of stories for the New York Times, uh, which prompted the uh, church committee to begin an investigation, not just on the MK Ultra program, but on other things that the CIA was doing that were not considered uh, on the up and up that were considered to be illegal. Um, But, you know, again, it's sort of like, it's, it's, this is about MKUltra. So if, if you know Maria Farmer's paintings, you will see, if you examine them, it doesn't even take examining them. If let's say, if you take the large one that Surprise, surprise, who bought the large one that she made sometime, I think last year or the year before? David Boys. David Boys, all of you know that David Boys is the attorney that helped Harvey Weinstein by signing a contract on his behalf with the uh, spy company Black Cube that employs former Mossad agents in Israel. And, um, you know, David Boyes at the time had to step down from the board of directors position, which he had at the New York Times, because the New York Times, although it's mainstream media, they too had um, journalists who were working on the Jeffrey Epstein case. And so, David Boyce resigned from his uh, position on the board of directors for the New York Times. However, we have seen in the Jeffrey Epstein case that it's been one person after another person after another person. All of these uh, $2,000 wingtip shoes stepping down 
from the board resigning you know it's like this clatter of like running for the exit and david boys is among those people however he also became connected to the victims in the jeffrey epstein case and he was partners with uh, Stan Pottinger. You should really look at, into Stan Pottinger and who he is and his connection to the covert operations that went on in uh, some of these intelligence connected operations. Um, and also, you know, his uh, offspring, because we're, you know, we're talking about a multi generational cover up. So that if you look at Maria Farmer's paintings, and many of her, many of you um, watched her attack Rose McGowan, Julie Brown, Tara Reed, and, and really a lot of people who were just um, normal people who had watched the documentary filthy rich and who began to follow her account and who really just wished her well. Uh, but she would invariably get upset um, at almost everyone. Uh, the, the, she got upset at Vicki Ward. I'm not a Vicki Ward fan, but there's a lot that we, we, we all gleaned from her 2003 article for Vanity Fair. So she should have, if she was interested in attacking uh, her, she should have attacked Grayton Carter, but she doesn't attack Grayton Carter because Vanity Fair, from where I sit, is part of this, like sort of this group that keeps tabs on things, like they kept tab, uh, tabs on the Promise Inslaw, Danny Castellero affair, like they kept tabs on the Jeffrey Epstein affair, granted using uh, Vicky as the writer, but ultimately you, you really where the buck stopped is with the CEO or the editor, the owners. If you're going to have a grudge against someone who is not working for themselves, you have to really take it up a notch to whomever they're working with. So I found that always a little bit odd. Um, so just to talk about Maria's art, Maria's art is full of MK Ultra symbols and not even like symbols. It's right there for everyone to see in the very large painting that she did where she calls Leslie Wexner the head of the snake. And by the way, I'm not disputing that, but where she calls Leslie Wexner the head of the snake um, David Boyce purchased that. It's so convenient for these attorneys to keep everything in-house, so they even purchased that. Uh, however, you see mushrooms in this painting. You see Jeffrey Epstein in a flying saucer. There's a lot of symbolism in this painting that, and you see um, the uh the cover that was on donald barr's book that was about child sexual slavery and uh forced um you know sort of forced uh pregnancies and sort of creating uh it, it's just it's all there and so if you it, it, if you look at it it's about mk ultra so I was always, from word go, I, I noticed a lot of similarities in the Epstein case to the Franklin case, which we know was MKUltra because of Paul Bonacci's um, uh, testimony when he had, went and sued, um, he, he, he filed a civil lawsuit against uh, the guy, I forget his name right now, Larry King. Uh, and so during that um, deposition, 
one of his multiples came out and described the MK Ultra aspect of this. And we also know that the finders, which happened a little bit before that, uh, was connected to the CIA. And that was also sort of connected to MK Ultra. We know about the other one, the Presidio case, that's connected also to Offit Air Force Base and MK Ultra. Um, so I knew that that. And, and, you know, I, I love Virginia. She's been a sweetheart and I'm very happy that she won her, um, that Prince Andrew decided to settle. I know a lot of you don't want that, wanted full disclosure, but that's not what we get when we have David Boys at the helm or Stanley Pottinger, who basically ingratiated themselves with um, Bradley Edwards, who I believe started as a really nice, honest guy. But I, I, you know, I don't know what happens to people when money becomes involved or power. You know, I, I, I don't know because I've never gone the money route. Um, but um, I have been in touch with, and by the way, he reached out to me, um, over two years ago. So it may, you know, I'm almost going on three years with this Epstein investigation and adding my own uh, point of view and adding the information that I knew and then sort of diving in a little bit deeper because clearly mainstream media is not doing it. Um, but um, I have had a very long-term uh, communication with the person who created uh, the promised software from Insla. I'm almost concerned uh, about saying his name, but I'm gonna just go ahead and say it, Bill Hamilton. So Bill Hamilton and I have communicated for almost three years now. He reached out to me, I responded, we stay in touch. I went to him. I believe it was two months ago. I can't even remember. It could have been about two months ago. And I said, hey, I really think this is about MK Ultra." And his initial response, and I'm sharing this with you. Um, it, this is going to be in my book, uh, Creating Epstein, Bill Barr, Leslie Wexner, and the CIA. This is in my book um, because I believe this is why I am being so incredibly targeted, you know, um, so many trolls, all of you are familiar with what's going on. And Maria Farmer specifically, who was connected to Stanley Pottinger, who was at the White House when the MK Ultra program was being exposed. And of course, one of the things about the promise software is that according to Bill Hamilton, I mean, we all know that it's it was first gen, right? So at this point, what else has it morphed into? But first gen uh, had certain capabilities aside from the fact that it had the back door installed by uh, Rafi Eitan and Robert Maxwell with you know the help of John Tower. It's a complicated story. I urge you to do some due diligence and read up on it. Uh, but it had a fourth capability and I'm not gonna go into the three that um, Hamilton was aware of, but there was a fourth one that was considered to be so much, uh, so big in scope that, and I'm paraphrasing cause I'm not looking at my notes and I'm not looking at his emails as I, do this podcast, but that money alone would not be able to fix the problem if he were to discover, if he and his wife were to discover what else the promised software was doing. Now, Hamilton was aware because he was in the NSA. He was aware that the government had a program 
where they, it was a blackmail program, is a, a honey pot situation. All governments have that. But initially, it was sort of like, okay, so perhaps promise was, was being used to keep track of the so called sex slaves, except that. When you use that term sex slave and you know about Kathy O'Brien, who was a sex slave, presidential sex slave, when you when you hear about, you know, these other cases that are documented and where we have people who have been trying to tell everyone what's going on, um, it ties it into the MK Ultra program. So I went to Bill and I'm like, you know what? I think that that the what the, the, the sort of the missing piece that you're looking for is the MK Ultra thing. Um, and so his response to me was, you know, I hadn't thought about it. I didn't know much about the program. It's not impossible. And then uh, I think he said, you know, let me just get back to you. So he does reach out to, um, I don't know who, it's not my place to ask him, but I did hear back from him, you know, at some point thereafter. And he said that whomever he spoke with, the response was trouble ahead meaning he should ask no questions about Jeffrey Epstein as it pertains to the MK Ultra program. So for me and for him, and now we're talking about Bill Hamilton. Okay, so if you don't know who he is, you should know who he is. The answer seems pretty clear. This is about MK Ultra being used in the Jeffrey Epstein case, I was able to sort of pinpoint uh, using uh, historical information about where Epstein was, who he went to sort of like stay under the radar with and what happened and, and how it coincides with um, certain things, you know, how it first coincided with the church committee hearing. So just before the hearing uh, during the time that um, Seymour Hirsch is exposing this in the newspaper at the time that the CIA, the CIA becomes aware of this early, very early in 1974, because they have an internal report. That internal report, uh, Family Jewels, uh, is leaked to Seymour Hirsch. It's leaked to him early in the year. Jeffrey Epstein is in New York uh, University, which by the way, is a place, a holding pen for spies. In fact, um, Avraham, um, I'm trying to remember his last name. He's a Mossad spy who was um, uh, instrumental in uh, recruiting Jonathan Pollard. Um, he was there. Uh, he was instrumental in other things and his handler, was uh, none other than the spy master, Rafi Eitan. So in 1974, everyone knows by now that Jeffrey Epstein moves from New York University without graduating. And under the uh, sort of the auspices of Donald Barr, the OSS officer, what, what happens in the world of the OSS, the CIA, you never get to retire unless you sort of like you're, you're killed. I was on the phone with a friend last night who's aware of like this case uh, very closely. She's paid a lot of attention to it. We spoke for two hours. And, and so, you know, the only way, and we spoke about this aspect, that the only way that you ever stop being OSS, even after it becomes CIA, is you drop dead, <laughs> you're killed, uh, you know, like there's no way out. And the only other times are whistleblower accounts. So I have some of those whistleblower accounts in my book, Creating Epstein, um, so that whether uh, Bill Barr actually had a normal uh, 
sit down and hire Epstein. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is that Bill Barr is in the intelligence agency. And, and it seems to me, as I laid out in, in my book, that Epstein was sort of like put under his, you know, put there into Dalton, good place for him to hide. And then he's moved another time uh, when the Iran-Contra situation happens. And then he's placed under Leslie Wexner's um, sort of like, you know, and Leslie Wexner is connected, you know, not only to the CIA, uh, but to Mossad uh, from my research and, and my work. Um, uh, so that, I, I, again, I'm not going to make this very long, but it seems to me that what um, the attorneys involved in the Jeffrey Epstein case and the reason that Glenn Maxwell's case was so tight, controlled, because I could I can do like three hours of a conversation on what went wrong in the Glenn Maxwell case. Uh, but it suffice to say that that it was not an open case. People, in my opinion, perjured themselves. Uh, there was a lot of information that could have been obtained by the, the, the uh, at least three and not Annie Farmer because she was never trafficked and she was never raped, um, but at least uh, three and specifically two of the uh, victims that would have shown that there was trafficking and it would have revealed some pretty big names, but that didn't happen. The prosecution had no intention of going there. And all of this is because uh, although I use the term MK Ultra, you know, that's an old fashioned term. I use it as an umbrella term. Even back in the day, it had hundreds of programs under it. And today, whatever it's morphed into is a much more sophisticated um, group of programs. But there's, uh, as far as I can tell, the only reason I'm getting so much pushback is because I'm the one bringing attention to the fact that Epstein and MKUltra are synonymous. And if you look at, you know, and I hate to say this, but even Virginia Giuffre's butterfly, that's a, that's the classic symbol of MKUltra. It's, it's, it represents a split mind. If you examine Maria Farmer's uh, paintings, if you examine, uh, if you look at this with looking for the connection to what Paul Bonacci said, uh, you'll see that there's so many similarities that it's, it, it would be almost impossible to say there was no MK Ultra involved. Um, so that when Maria Farmer was sort of like spinning in every direction except straight, what she could have been doing if she really wanted to bring clarity and an openness and um, uh, I don't even, even know what to say about her mindset or her mind period. Uh, she could have revealed a lot of the information that the government is keeping quiet. Don't forget Alex Acosta said Jeffrey Epstein belonged to intelligence. He was above his pay grade. He was told to back off. Um, I don't care if mainstream media has decided to forget it, ignore it, or even say he never said it. He said it. Uh, I'm not ignoring it. And I don't think anyone should ignore it. I think that's that's a pretty big clue. You, you, you can't get a bigger clue than that. Um, but that is what I think is going on as far as the attempt to shut me down. Well, no, you can't shut me down because you know I'm gonna keep talking and God forbid something happens to me. Maria Farmer becomes a co-conspirator in whatever happens to me. If, if, if some harm comes to me and all of her trolls, her little troll army, you know, there are ways for their IP addresses to be found for their 
identities to be found. So uh, when I sent, uh, in closing, when I sent uh, David Boys and Bradley Edwards uh, the cease and desist letter in January, uh, basically saying, hey, just get Maria Farmer to stop harassing me. Um, three days later, her Twitter, her entire Twitter account was gone. I discovered uh, via the grapevine that it was David Boyes who shut it down. Well, she just recently opened a, a new account on YouTube. Uh, so, and she's got her troll army, unless it's her using fake uh, Twitter accounts attacking me. Uh, but, you know, I, they're also attacking other people. I, it's just for some reason, it just seems like I am, according to what a lot of you have told me, I seem to be her biggest um, target. And the only thing, again, that makes me suspect that perhaps David Boys is orchestrating this, I don't know. But what David Boys and, and Stanley Pottinger, I don't know about Brad Edwards because I always really wanted to think of him as a normal guy, but who knows? Uh, but the, these other two, I don't really trust them. Do I think that they would be part of a government uh, cover-up? Sure, why not? I mean, they were part of other government cover-ups. Do I think that some of the victims may have gone ahead with some of their um, with their influence or followed what they they told them to do. Sure, why not? They were theoretically helping the victims get money from the Jeffrey Epstein Compensation Fund. So if you have an attorney who's working for you for free and you're going to see several million dollars at the end of whatever length of time, Sure, I can see that they would go along and do almost anything. Um, this has been a very long, per protracted situation. You know, Epstein was uh, initially only got on the radar in 2005, and we all know that he did practically no jail time in 2008, and that was just uh, day jail. So, are there some victims that worked very hard? A hundred percent. Do I think that um, some victims are more important than others? I only know about Virginia Giffray and um, the hard life that she had, and I support her a hundred percent and have. Do I think that someone who has become abusive should continue to receive my support? No. I, from this point on, I do not support Maria Farmer. Uh, I hope that she gets psychiatric help and, you know, I hope that she doesn't do anything that's illegal that would haunt her for the rest of her life, her, her and her family. In any event, um, I'm going to end this because I'm tired. It's been a long day. Uh, but let me know what you think about the fact that, yeah, you know, the answer is MKUltra. Uh Hamilton was told, don't ask any more questions. And, um, you know, did you, have you seen, have you seen the signs? Cause like I, I, the signs are all there for me. Okay. Well, listen, for, don't forget to like the video, subscribe and um, until the next time. Bye.